Okay. Uh, I know the it's the warmth. It, it's definitely that. You have an ice pack? Yeah. Okay. I see that something's happening with the YouTube video, so we must be live. Hey. It is low. Low. Yeah. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah, my internet test is good, so I can just talk. Yeah, you'll be you'll be back. Hello world. Not sure if y'all can hear me right now or see me, <laughs> but I might be on here alone. Um, not sure. But if anyone's out there watching this, type something in the chat. That'd be awesome. Um, it's definitely hot. It's it's hot. There are people watching. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, uh, yeah. Mushroom Jesus says it's like frozen. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just had to turn my computer off for an hour because it wasn't charging because Ableton was taking up too much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, the name, yes. <laughs> it was because I didn't want to pay for the big ones. <laughs> oh, it was like, really, it was like way more expensive. <laughs> So I decided to get an espresso one. Hey, what's up, world? Um, what's up, Mushroom Jesus? What's up, Scott, Carl, Jeff, who's always around? Horton. Yeah. Don't don't chat me anything because the, the, the private message to me just popped up <laughs> at the bottom of the uh, the screen here on YouTube. So, <laughs> oh, they can't hear you. They can't hear you. No, they can't hear me. Yeah, guys, it's like, oh, there we, I mean, now. Do, are you guys hearing Peter now? Uh, do you hear this? Oh, man. Okay. All right.
right. Uh, <laughs> What's up, fourteen bit MIDI? <laughs> oh, fourteen bit MIDI. I met I met fourteen bit MIDI. Oh, it's great to uh, see you are here. I met him at Nam. All right, and so hey. now that we are actually going to start after the severe difficulties of getting a computer running, truncate the beginning of that in the twenty first century. This is our new future. Well, it's just because, honestly, like, our setups are so crazy right now. Dude, yeah. Like, earlier we were sound checking, and, like, Peter and I were just like, okay, this stuff is majorly, like, (laughs) there's a lot going on. Peter, could you show me your screen on Zoom? Like, I can't see you. You can't see me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did that because uh, I thought it would save some cycles. But Oh, that's okay. That's fine. And start the video here. Oh, it's and, totally fine. You know, if that helps things. And um, I don't know. Claire. Peter's only in the left channel. I love that everyone here is helping oh, tech I the know. situation. That's awesome. I know. And I wish uh, I could um, actually get my gear to work right. Um, I'm only, oh, you know what? I bet there's a mono setting that needs to be triggered again since I'm using a different mic. As you can see, my, my lav mic was totally, was just done for. Um, yeah. And I think if I go to advanced audio properties and I can turn on the mono and now everyone's going to be, oh, now I am in every channel yeah. surrounding you with sound. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, good. Now now we're actually ready. Welcome to so. the Sensa live stream. You've gotten 10 minutes of setup. Um, <laughs> our, our guest today is the fabulous Laura Escudé. Um, yeah. we go way back from many years ago from my days with Livid. Uh, Laura is since then has become sort of a, uh, the queen bee of playback and live performance. So she's, she's been providing services, um, with her company, electronics, electronic creatives for probably what, 10 years now. Yep. Yep. Um, for some of the biggest acts and making sure that their concerts are perfect everywhere they go. And that, um, of course, is what the people uh, watching the stage get to see. But, of course, behind the scenes, that perfection takes a toll. Um, and now, since all fun has been canceled, um, this is the most fun we can have. But it's pretty fun hanging out with Laura and diving deep into uh, how she's adapting and what she's got going on and what she does besides uh, being a playback uh, proprietor and entrepreneur. Um, Because really always first, Laura, you were an artist and then somehow you fell into being a business person and uh, now now, now you are both at the both extremes, so. Welcome, Laura Escudé. It is just great to have you here. Thanks for, oh gosh, that was such a nice, warm welcome. Thank you, Peter, for having me. This is super cool. Um, Hi to the folks on YouTube checking this out right now. Hi to the folks driving right now and listening to this. Um, Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's it's so interesting, like you said, about um, doing concerts for so long, like, doing the technical setup for these live streams is like just like that yeah it really it's <laughs> in a way except for like the thousands or hundreds or tens or 20 people or whatever however many people are watching us it's a little like less intimidating over the internet you know because you can't actually hear like <laughs> any booze <laughs> right well the internet has always allowed for a lot of slop I mean, yeah. starting from like, you know, the first, like, I don't know if you ever encountered IUMA, the Internet Underground Music Archive, which was the first music service on the internet that started, I think, in wow. 1996 in Santa oh, Cruz. Wow. Um, but yeah, so they were, they, there was no MP3 compression. They were just like dialing in like super low bit resolution. I think they were using, um, they were using like, mu bit compression they were there was definitely a compressed file but it was a very wacky format that wasn't really designed for audio and so then they, they would just you know re- bit reduce and and uh and channel reduce the audio so they could stream little bits of it to you and have a library of artists that you know people would just upload their stuff um for 
56k modems 28k modems so you know and we were so happy to have it um and yeah. youtube again like you know when youtube first came on and even still it's like the the video quality is you know terrible <laughs> and the audio quality is really a challenge so these are the challenges that you know that uh, we are trying to improve on i think as we try to face a sort of new performance paradigm in the in the uh in the in the wake of of social distancing so in that regards you are kind of at the at the eye of the storm laura because you know you had a life built around performance for you for others for your employees and everything um so right uh, yeah so i you know i, I don't want to i don't want to make <laughs> no, i don't want to make it a, a depressing talk but i know no. that this has been you know a hard situation for you um uh -huh. you know a lot of people are getting laid off and now you're you're sort of laid off yourself and you're laying people off so yeah but at the same time i've you know watched your efforts uh, to try to find support for the musical community and, you know, try to figure out a way of pivoting your business. You're not just throwing in the towel and going out and, you know, being pissed about this. Like, you still have a lovely smile on your face. So tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's been a challenge. Um, I kind of have to have a smile on my face though, because, you know, I'm healthy, I'm well, I'm safe, all of that. Um, so I'm just really, really thankful, um, to be able to still continue doing what I'm doing. And we have the internet still, which is great. So I get to perform and do all the things that I love to do just online. And I get to collaborate with people and do fun things like this. And so, you know, it's, it's, I think it's an exciting time. I mean, it's really a time for opportunity in my eyes. You know, I realize that like, there's a lot of challenge and it's going on. A lot of people are facing hardships and, you know, loss of income. And, you know, so there is all of that. Um, I really do hope that a lot of this uh, stimulus money comes in for people soon. I'm not talking about like the, you know, $1,200 or whatever that everyone's getting, but like all these other things, like the $2,000 for everyone a month that's, you know, on the docket now. And like, yeah. you know, some of the payroll protection stuff. I mean, everyone out there, cross your fingers. For me, say good prayers, whatever you do, just give good energy so that I can get the payroll protection program because that would be amazing. But it's just really like a time to just, get as much resources as you can and then make the best of, you know, your situation. And then of course, you know, if you're healthy and well, um, so I really yeah. just have to keep a smile on my face because of, you know, those reasons. But, you know, I have no doubt that, uh, there's going to be a lot of growth from this time period. There's always a lot of creativity. It's proven in the past. We look at all the, you know, pandemics and different challenges that have happened in the past in our history. And, um, people have really risen to the occasion and created more art and gotten very creative. And I see that happening right now. I mean, everyone online is being so creative. In fact, there's too many things going on. I feel like yeah. I'm, I'm busier than ever. <laughs> I, I'm in the same boat. And, you know, this is something that I've, it's funny because it's like I've talked about, you know, I've talked with Moldover and yeah. Ralph Rund and um, Hugo Paris and uh in my previous talks you know and this is just all sort of like something that like i've sort of come to sort of appreciate as a, as a theme i want to sort of get out with this pod you know this sort of podcast or you know these live streams is to you know sort of like well there is a takeaway here and that you know this this community that we're in of you know creative computer use like uh, like w we can we can actually be useful here um and we can you know really kind of like put our creativity to use and you know we're well positioned to figure something out that is um going to make it work because it's like we you know we worked a lot of us you know is, are driven by this sort of like want to figure things out like we, we're not sort of we're not slaves to the utility that i suppose you know that like an industrialist is it's like we're looking for uh, a way to be creative and so you know you take that out it's like well that feeling's still there so we still have a bunch of tools where we can be creative so I'm, I'm hopeful that I think a lot of these people are going to figure something out that is, you know, and as I was saying with Hugo, it's like, I think maybe, you know, maybe, maybe this is going to be like, you know, I was, I was like, what's the new paradigm? We're novelists or something like that. <laughs> uh, maybe recorded music is going to have a, you know, a new day where people, will, that's how people are going to have to share and experience things again. And 
that will be sort of like a material or structural thing that people enjoy with that rather than, you know, this sort of like massive presence and spectacle. So, yeah. Um, I've been looking, I've been looking forward to like what you've been doing because you've been sort of like, I just catch you, I caught you the other day doing a live stream. You're just like trying to figure out with your community, like how do we get live streaming audio to work? Like what were your, some of your findings with that? Oh man. Yeah. So every Saturday morning at 11 AM Pacific standard time, I've been doing a just meet up with all the Ableton certified trainers or well, a handful of them, whoever shows up, I'm, I show up every week and I host the thing and it's kind of like a little TV show and we just have a lot of fun and we all nerd out and we just figure out what each other knows. Cause we all have like different setups and we're trying to do different things. And, you know, so it's been a, uh, quite the process to figure out like who knows what and how to make our different setups happen. And, you know, I actually invested quite heavily into my setup last year because I'd been doing more oh. and I'd been doing online stuff. Yeah, I you, cut out. Sorry, you, you were doing you cut out the reason. You were doing more online stuff or more performance? What were you online you were, stuff? Okay. Yeah. So I was, you know, I've been doing more stuff in the online space, especially over the last two years. Um, and I had started to build up my live streaming setup. So I had already been doing stuff. And then now in the last five, six weeks, something like that, it's of course really amped up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've been just been sharing like setups and tricks and trying to make things fancier, you know? I mean, I've got two laptops and, you know, experimenting with like live streaming to the second laptop behind me and, you know, c pushing out the video there so that yeah. my, first computer doesn't have to raise the brunt and blah, blah, all that kind of stuff and yeah. all the fun little tricks and, and tips. But yeah, I've learned quite a bit and it's super fun. I love nerding out on this stuff. And like now all of my friends and everyone I know is like, Hey, what's up? Like, uh, can you help me with your setup, my setup? And I need reverb on my voice and I need this and I need that. And you know, so it's fun. Right. It's you're, 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 you're sort of becoming a, a, a hub of knowledge for this live streaming performance thing. And so that's like, you, that's kind of an ideal pivot. Hopefully there's a, uh, hopefully there's an economy and quality that we can, you know, attain, <laughs> attain out of this. <laughs> um, so, yeah. what, so I'm curious though, though, like you said, you had already sort of started on this live streaming thing. Like what, what sort of in, and what brought on that change? What was, what were you sort of pivoting from at that point or I imagining at that point? Well, like, like you said in the beginning, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I tried to fight it for many years. And, and then I was like, okay, no, I actually just like building things. And I like building businesses and different pr projects and platforms. And, you know, of course, building EC was one thing. And, you know, that was a lot and a, a great reward and building something, um, you know, especially the last year, I uh, up my staff and had a lot more people and got people on payroll because of AB5 and the California gig workers economy law and all that kind of stuff. And really just like got super into the business and, you know, against like my, <laughs> against what I wanted, I ultimately had to end up figuring a lot of stuff out, but I was like, Oh man, this business stuff is hard, you know? And, and so, but I did, and I, I went all in cause it was like, okay, I got to figure this out. Once I start figuring something out, I'm like, all right, like I'm just going to do it. And then, um, I, about two years ago, I got the idea, a little over two years ago, got the idea to hold master track, which is our, um, our playback engineering course. And we had it twice so far and that was in person. And, uh, I hired a company who had just started their own online course and I hired them to do our in-person course. But I saw like what they were doing with their online course and I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I want to build an online course. And so I just had it in the back of my mind. And then I just thought, okay, I'm going to do this someday. And then about a year and a half ago, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to build my own online course called Transmute. And so um, that was the first iteration was the beginning of, of last year of 2019. We had um, we ran it twice last year and we had people from all over the world join. So that was like really the first time that I had a taste of like running an online education platform, 
you know, having people tune in, using Zoom all the time, like living on Zoom, not as much as I'm living on Zoom now, but I was living on Zoom quite a bit. And so really just, uh, I went all in on Transmute. And I really went on all in on helping to educate, educate people, artists, independent artists specifically to help elevate their live shows um, and in the online space. And a lot of people were like, how are you going to do that online? Doesn't, don't you need to be like in person? And I was like, no, I could just record things and, you know, just play in my studio and show people things in real time. And so that's what I did. And so I created Transmute and uh, it's a two month course. It's just super all intensive. It's called the Transmute Accelerator because it's like an accelerated path to like learning tons of stuff. And there's lots of content. It's basically like all of the things that I learned in the live performance space, like dumped into this, this one course. And yeah. There's some playback type stuff in there, but it's, uh, you know, it's m more geared towards artists who want to be their own tech and put together their own, you know, music and transitions and control everything themselves and use controllers. And so it's a lot, there's a lot of crossover between the two, but I would say it's more of like a creative course um, and a design course rather than, you know, a playback course, which can be a little bit more technical. Right. That's, I mean, yeah, because it's sort of prepping the person on front rather than prepping the group behind, I guess. In that regard. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then that's, you know, I guess, you know, it makes sense because it's like that's the direction that so many artists that, you know, you see like it's so many solo artists. It's like the laptop is empowered and controllers have empowered the solo artist and, you know, in insane ways. And, um, and, you know, and then we, you see that reflected on the stage and so many like solo performers, you know, fewer bands, I guess. Um, and you know that has its pluses and minuses obviously but then you have that solo performer who you know has been wanting to create like the spectacle of the band and you know but at the same time not every solo performer is you know square pusher or skrillex <laughs> or you know these huge yeah. huge sort of like you know a big huge spectacle it's like you want to create something interesting you have more like people like holly herndon and um yeah you know, sort of smaller artists that are doing like, don't have a big rig, <laughs> but still want to impress people and be creative with the, all the senses. So, wow. Absolutely. So that is, are, is that what you're doing? Um, so you said next week you're doing your masterclass and you're doing that free, which is very generous of you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would love to talk about that. So, yeah. you know, since the, this whole COVID-19 thing hit, I mean, I don't know what <laughs> came over me, but I just, I just felt this like need to just share so much because I, I knew people were at home. I knew people were wanting to level up their skills. Um, I So that's why I started doing like the Ableton Certified Trainer meetup and hangout and, and broadcasting that. And I done quite a few like live streaming masterclasses and high quality audio live streaming masterclasses and um, just all different kinds of stuff across the board for um, artists to, you know, create an online course, just like giving people tastes of what I do and like just showing like the different, you know, lanes that I sort of play in as an artist and entrepreneur. And um, so Transmute is actually coming up in two weeks. It's starting on May 4th. And, you know, to gear up for Transmute, we decided to do a three day event and it's uh, next Monday through Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and you can find the information on my website. If you go there, you can RSVP. It's totally free. I've got two artists, Dressage and Sudan Archives. Um, Dressage is an incredible artist. She was actually just on Andrew Huang's Four Producers video. Nice. Um, one of the four producers. She's amazing. She was a transmutant from the last uh, round of Transmute. And then um, Sudan is an artist that uh, is also a violinist who I've been um, working with on her show. And so we're going to show her Ableton Live set and what we did for her show. Cool. And then I'm so, going to show my set and then we're going to go over everything. So it's going to be super fun. Yeah. And that's going to be super deep. Cause I, you know, so, you know, obviously like I've been sort of like sort of fallen into this idea of like, Oh, it'd be great to like do a live pack with every artist that I'm, I'm talking to, you know, again, it's sort of like that. I want, you know, I want there to be something for people to take away and play with and something new and different because, you know, some people have time, um, not everybody, you know, like yourself and myself and a lot of people I know are kind of like, ah, I'm busier than ever. Um, yeah. You know, as, as part of it is just like a mad rush of just, of like, I have to do things differently. And so suddenly it's like, you have to 
build out that infrastructure. But, um, but mm-hmm. yeah, I think a lot of people are, even the people who are busy are hungry for something new, you know, and, um, y- you know, like your, y- you know, your sounds and your sound design stuff is all very like particular and very well crafted. So I think, yeah, going through your Ableton live sets would be, I, you know, maybe that's what we should have done in the stream, <laughs> but that would be a rich, that part seems like two. a very rich, yeah, definitely like a part two thing. Cause it's like, I mean, we're we going some stuff. Through, we are going to show some stuff. stuff. Yeah. You know what? I'm I'm watching the comments and people are saying that your mic is a lot lower than mine. Is it? Okay. I just this seems to be a consistent problem. And no, that actually, I think if you get closer to just, the mic. Just closer. No, it's just my, that's my low. low throw of. For me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it sounds good to me, but a couple of people are commenting. All right. I'm glad you can see the comments because from where I am, they're very far away. Which is yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm counting on my. Uh, on my colleagues who are not not anywhere near me. So I don't know. Right, right. I'm still trying right. to figure all this crap out. <laughs> right. I, I think they're like trying to get your attention, but. I know. They need to have bigger fun. They, they need like a, a bell or something. <laughs> but I think it's amazing that, you know, you've got people, colleagues in the chat typing. This is awesome. I was yes. like, wait, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sensel. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Talk about let's let's talk about some of your live performance stuff because you you know you are that solo performer who is trying to bring big energy to the stage. You know you you were not only were you doing playback stuff, but then you were started to like perform with some of the artists like doing opening act stuff, which you know for the size of artists that you're performing with seems kind of insane. You know because you're you're doing the type of show that you were like you know doing in smaller places and then suddenly you have like a much bigger arena like how was that change for you and you know did you sort of a did you a, did you sort of modify your sets for that audience or did you just say I'm gonna do what I do and you know and then how did you sort of like how did you find that journey of like okay now I'm sort of like figuring out this performance you know and trying to bring this energy as a solo performer um and what are the what's the gear, what's the sound design, what do I interact with, and what do I just leave for playback? Mm, yeah, yeah. So I think, let's see, 2015 or so, I had been touring with Kanye for about five years. Um, and, you know, while it was awesome, um, I was constantly frustrated that I couldn't actually control things <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because I, I would edit all the music and I would set it all up and I would program it. And then a DJ would basically be controlling, you know, the, the songs. Yeah. And so I started kind of looking around for other gigs and, you know, I ended up staying involved and in working with him, Kanye for a couple, uh, a couple of years after that, but he decided to take a break and he would have like a, a couple of shows here and there. And I trained someone from EC to go and, and do those shows while I was touring with Miguel. Um, so I got a call from Miguel's management and they said, you know, we need someone to basically DJ playback on stage. You know, do you want to do that? And I was like, heck yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I got to DJ playback on stage and um, do controller stuff. There was no violin, but it was, you know, just controller stuff. And um, so that was that was super cool. Um, Really just got a chance to be a bit more improvisational and creative with the show, which is what I was wanting. Um, Got to control things myself because, you know, I'm a control freak and I don't know many programmers who aren't control freaks. So. We just want everything to be perfect. Um, so yeah, um, that was that was in 2015, 2016, and um, I'd been working with a couple of other artists and was uh, performing with them as well. And so, yeah, it just kind of came naturally. I think I had been putting myself out there more as an artist. I mean, I've been performing for I don't know 15 years. Right. right doing electronic music, you know, with weird like gadgets and all the stuff. And then, you know, I kind of was booking my own shows alongside the tours that I was doing. So like, you know, Kanye would do a European tour and then like we've been be in Stockholm and I would, you know, reach out to like 
my friends at Teenage Engineering or like other companies and to be like, hey, can you like get me a show? And so I would just play these, you know, random shows. And I was kind of like doing that in between tour stuff. And then, um, yeah, it just kind of happened naturally. And I just started, you know, just started touring and, and doing more like DJ playback kind of stuff. Wow. So you were, you were organizing shows like, uh, like on the tour with, with your acts. That's, that's, that's bold. Um, off, I would, yeah, I would go down. Some, so were you, like, were you organizing that? So you said you mentioned you were doing like a, you hit up people at companies you knew. So you're sort of organizing that through the music products industry and that network rather than say like a showbiz industry network. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Totally. I mean the, the music tech nerd community has always been my community. Yeah. A lot of like Ableton folks, a lot of like, um, friends of friends, a lot of just like Facebook posts, like, Hey, who do I know in Finland? Like, does anyone know anyone in Finland? And then, you know, I would hit up that person yeah. and then get me a gig. And, you know, so I would make like 20 bucks and <laughs> you'd right. pay for one beer. <laughs> yeah. But you, I mean, that was, you know, you didn't have to pay to go there. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, whatever, you know, it's like, yeah, it was so, it wasn't about the money. It was, it was right. about the experience. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, I mean, that is, that is kind of interesting because it's like, that's something I've been thinking about is, you know, and sort of behind the scenes and hopefully, you know, my colleagues and I have been sort of working on something in the background. And so hopefully we can actually announce something, but it is sort of like that trying to, uh, improve and, uh, just make more fertile that industry, that music products relationship with artists, because, um, we've, you know, that's something that we've experienced, you know, just at Sensel is like, you know, the artists, cause you know, not to sort of like, you know, brag or whatever, but we have a super creative tool and, you know, and I'm trying to get the word out there about it, but really the best people to do it are the, the artists that we know. And, um, you, you know, and I, and I, think, you know, that's clearly like what moves a lot of music products is a lot of the artist relations. And so. I think that's just fascinating that you were like, oh, you were sort of like doing a performance, a small performance career or s steady. I don't know if career is the right word for it, <laughs> but it was sort of sort of manifested by the music products rather than showbiz. And, Absolutely. You, know, you know, and I think that's totally like, yeah, that's totally something I'm looking for is like, how do we make that happen? Because, you know, again, in this sort of like, uh, you know, post mass humanity you know, situation we're going to be in for a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see like, well, what can we, what, what sort of relation, new relationships can come out, um, you know, that, that help both music products, companies and artists. So hopefully we'll have something to announce soon. So I yeah. will, um, <laughs> teaser. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> little teaser out there. I know, but you sparked by, by your comment there. So let's see, yeah. we, we have a hard cap because you are going to be performing. Um, that's why you're dressed so fancy, and I'm in a T-shirt from, like, my former employer. Well, so, you know, <laughs> about 30 minutes ago, I wasn't so... <laughs> 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 that looked nice for the internet. Yes. Although, if you catch me mostly on Zoom, I'll just be, like, in my ECD shirt, but, you know. Uh, yes. That but is my that. mom might be watching, so hi, Mom. All right. Hello, Laura's mom. Thank you. <laughs> um but I do want to get into the sound pack because I think it's kind of like, it's kind of an interesting, interesting like spin that we both like collaborated on, um, you know, and, and just to be transparent, like, you know, that you've been working with your set of controllers, like you haven't used, been using them more for a whole lot. And so this was sort of my opportunity to be like, okay, Laura, you, you're going to have to really see what this can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because, um, I had been using it more for playback, actually. Okay. Well, it uh, is. I mean, it's it's like the the button, the dream button controller, because if you want seven buttons, you can make seven buttons on it. So. Yeah. Oh. So I just wanted to show the folks I had, you know, the the paths for like previous song, next song, play and stop, you know, a la Strange Electronic set list yes. on, on, this, on this more. And I, and I left them on there just to show the folks at home that uh, you can use it for playback if you want. Although it, it's better used for more creative pursuits like the packs that um, we collaborated on together. So, um, yeah, it was really great to, 
to see what you did with these packs. I encourage anyone who's uh, watching uh, this this stream to go grab the packs. Maybe if Mr. Sensel could post the link. <laughs> it's, the link is in the description of this. Um, and so it, oh, takes, okay. it takes people to a landing page. And of course, yeah. of course, because we're running a business, we collect an email before we send it your way. Um, yeah. And we do share that with Laura, too, because she was generous enough to do this. And she's yeah. got a... She need she needs to get her business rolling again too. So we're all just gonna yeah we're gonna spam you all a lot with all of our fascinating your stuff. Emails <laughs> everyone. <laughs> but this this is one I like to show because I've been using this for some of my live streams. Oh. This is my this is my sort of like my set my five buttons actually six because I didn't bother with labeling this one. But yeah, mm -hmm. just masking tape and labels and you yeah. know and the innovators overlay. So um, you have you have the sound set dialed up because I kind of want to yeah let's let's yeah. show that off. Yeah. So, um, all right. So the, the one that says, let me go to my, my live set and, and actually, um, you know, if you want, I could share my screen and just... sure. Yeah. I'll get my face out of here and we'll look at the screen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So here, hopefully you guys are all seeing an Ableton screen. Um, yes, I, I, I it is coming it. I'm seeing it, so everybody else is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, with with the morph here, um, there's we've got actually two different packs. Um, one is the warrior vocal pack, and so we've got a couple of different things mapped here. So on the on the pressure, right? We've got the the aftertouch. It's the loop length. It's controlling the loop length. So. If we come into the sample and then we can see when I press down more the the loop is, it's kind of it's hard to see in the crappy compressed world of online video but you can't the, the playback head on the, the waveform you can see that's just jumping around it's it's almost like a granular effect yeah so as I as I uh, press down more the loop gets smaller and then if I move my finger to the right, which is the X that's controlling the pitch. That is super cool. I love that sound. And then, and then the filter. And then also these, um, what do you call these, Peter? They're not knobs. The yeah, they're, I call them knobs. I mean, for you know the knob sliders. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the uh, polar sliders. I don't know. We've got um, these are mapped to the macros. You'll need to. You'll need to have the blue hand on the device, though. I see that your blue hand is not on the sensor. So, go. You're gonna need to shift that. Put that blue hand on the sensor mod warrior warrior rack device okay oh yeah and then yeah. oh click on the device itself and then get that blue hand over there oh, oh. i see the blue hand here yeah how come it's not moving <laughs> see you're not just for everybody else watching you're not the only ones who struggle with live um, <laughs> Right, and, and we all know that this is not an actual um, MPE. Um... Right, it's not. But, I mean, that's that's kind of the point of it is that, like, okay, Live, Live 10 does not do an MPE, but you c still can take advantage of, like, this sort of, you know, this, this dynamic surface. So you can still yeah. do cool stuff. Like, you can't – you're not allowed to let it stop you. And that, it's, it's kind of like – yeah. So it's the cool thing is the, the I, my advice to people is like the best instruments to work with are sampler and um, wave uh, wavetable. What's is it called wavetable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they have that they have that MIDI modulation matrix there, and that's where you can really get into stuff and quickly attach stuff. So like the maps that are built for the Ableton Live script. Um, those send uh, we have them sending like on the vertical is sending mod wheel and then left and right is pitch bend and after touch is channel pressure so you have that mod matrix and sampler and in wave station that you can attach those things really easily 
So you can see the little yellow lights down there and those are lighting up because they're getting that data. And then you can just sort of choose yeah. what you want to modulate. Um, yeah. And so like even, I, I don't know, like one, one idea I was thinking of is like with the, with those pads is that you can actually take the same sample across all 16 pads and ha have it mapped to have the pressure mapped to, um, to the, uh, what's the word? I'm like, pressure mapped to the loop, loop length and loop, loop start or loop end or whatever. And you do, if you set that differently on every pad, you basically have like this, like 16 pad granular synthesizer, <laughs> You know, do you see what I'm saying? Like, because everything's going to be like in this sort of different loop window of the same sample and you're just going to be tweaking them. And it's like, and it, and it works, you know, like that shifting the loop window around, it doesn't introduce a bunch of clicks and stuff. So yeah, there's some super cool design that you can do with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat are talking. Yes, you can do MP and able to with the 16 channels yes and and, and Rolly has generously you know created a nice guide about how to do that um and you know where yeah you set up a 16 channel like instrument and then you it, it's a it's it's yes you can do it like you can host like stuff but it's not it's not like bitwig where you can just like drop stuff in and make it happen <laughs> so true that true that well um, Anyway, yeah. this is what you what you created here with this pack, and I see that Mr. Sensel just put this in the the chat, the link to go oh, get cool the pack. Thanks, which Mr. Is awesome. Sensel. That would be Mark or Matt. I don't, I don't mean to be so anonymous. <laughs> oh, that was cute. Um, so yeah, this is one of them, and then let me grab the other one. So one of the things I love about the morph is that you could just literally go like this. And voila. Yes. That, that's the that's the hook. <laughs> and then here we are. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the other one. Um, so just to follow up on the one that we were just listening to, the pack, the warrior pack, it's actually all my vocal samples from a song called Warrior from a couple of years ago um, that I had created. And then Peter just made it all that more awesome by morphifying it by morphing it <laughs> right i mean it's already a verb <laughs> morphing it, yeah. um so that was super cool and then the other one is um my cello effects so we've got the piano one here and then let me just yep it is working so let me go back to the share screen and we can share ableton again okay so um, similar stuff here, although the, the Y is the sample selector here. So as I kind of go up and down, so this is a bunch of like avant-garde cello samples that I recorded one day and created this pack out of it. And yeah and oh. I, it's the, I saw that like you had the sample selector on a knob and i'm like oh that's that's like a like it's like the ableton pro's best friend is the sample selector and, and i'm like okay but you can you can do that with your fingers now <laughs> you know like you don't need to reach for a different yeah. thing and i was like okay i'm gonna try this and i was like oh okay that's all over very it's so brilliant and i'm actually gonna play this in my set nice. in a little bit as well um so yeah and then we've got um <laughs> The, the pitch on the X as well, again, right. And some of these samples are just really short, so it's kind of, there we go. Yeah. I love that one. That one's so awesome, Pitch Band. <laughs> Get some delay on that. Oh. And then, well. And then <laughs> the psychedelic possibilities are endless. Got my delay right here on my ohm. Uh oh. Oh, nice. Bringing it back to oh, way you, back to what we, we actually met. Yeah, I know from Living Instruments. You're just repping that ohm so hard. You're like the oh. number one, number one ohms ohm RGB virtuoso. You know, it still works. It's still great. I, although I did, Mark did, um, he did repair mine last year. Oh wow. And it didn't. He was like, I I had uh, seen him at. 
like South by last year. And he was like, I got you. If anything, you know, if anything ever happens, I, you know, I can all repair your stuff. And I had a problem with mine after 10 years or something, never having an issue. Yeah. And he fixed it. So shout out Mark. Nice. Uh, yeah. So the, so this is super cool. I will definitely be using this now that you like morphed. <laughs> I morphed it. <laughs> It. It's not like Google, you know, they had to make up a verb. Like, it's a verb. Um, but yeah, similar stuff going on here with the aftertouch and the sample selector and the filter. Yeah. And did, did we did ever get those vocal effects working? Yeah. So um, with, the, me... with the no okay. overlay? I did not. So what I did, because we ran out of time earlier, yeah. is I sort of just mapped it. I wasn't sure exactly what you had had in mind. Mm -hmm. On the left-hand side, I turned it on with this, and then I did a, hey. Um, wait, hold on. Let me turn this off so we don't hear that at the same time. And then, yeah. Check. Oh. <laughs> Got this. Okay, so what I They're had in mind at the same time, but like yeah. I know you meant to do it some other way, and so I'm sorry if I botched your. It's a, it's all right. We ran out of time, and it's it's a weird idea. So and and frankly, I came up with it like at the last minute anyway. So the the but the idea is that the the left morph is the left part of the morph is just a big slider. Um. Oh wait, I need to put my put myself on here so people can see. Um. So I just sort of created a big slider on the left, and then left the um uh wait the mouse is confusing here we go hi hi i'm dancing um jesus christ it's late um <laughs> uh, so the so like the the left part is just like a big thick slider that is actually 50 50 millimeters wide which is as wide as my thick blue tape so um so that is just a big, big slider for wet dry on that. And then this is just an XYZ like chaos pad thing. Uh, let me get that in the frame here. This is an XYZ pad for the chaos pad. So it should be automatically like uh, mapped in the set that I sent that, that's in the Ableton Live pack that you download because it's yeah. just like CCs like two, three and four on X, Y and Z. Um, and so it's just kind of like a cool like vocal controller so you can wet dry and then bring in weird effects and they're super crazy and dramatic in the example because like i just want to make sure people understand like oh this is actually happening but i think probably you'd want to do something un unless you're super crazy but you probably want to do something a little bit more artful with them um, I mean, i'm pretty crazy but. <laughs> but it's so it's just kind of like the thing is it's also set up like i made them i made that left one really big so it could be a foot pedal too um conceivably you could use it with your use it with your um use it with your foot because um, mm -hmm. I was thinking of, you know, guitar to some degree, but also vocals because like, you know, you can, you can actually, you know, have this thing and then just, you know, sing into the mic and then do stuff on the morph with it and have a lot of parametric control with just a big dumb tablet. So yeah. Anyway, that was my, that was my vision for that. And that was taken from like your vocal effects that, um, you know, you have like the, the selector that could select all the different effects. And I assume that's kind of like a playback trick that you're using to sort of be able to jump through a bunch of different things within a show very easily. So, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that selector is gone from practical to, to a, a more of a, an expressive thing in my opinion. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. I, I mean, I thought it was cool. I, I was trying to figure out what you. <laughs> that, that was my vision. The XYZ pad on the right and then the wet dry on the left. Yeah. So. Oh, well, super cool. And the other cool thing that you did here was when you install the pack, you can see the information about what everything does, which I was like, man, Peter just like went all in. Like, I'm so impressed. Like, wow. Like, this is so incredible. Like, it looks way better than anything that I would ever do. And I'm like, you're making me look good. <laughs> all right. Well, that's my, you know, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make you all look good. <laughs> like, you need help. I mean, I'm the one in the t-shirt here, right? Uh, but so. seriously, when you guys, when you guys, 
install the pack, definitely check out the notes um, that pop up in the right side of Ableton because he detailed like all the different things that he that he programmed in it, and it's pretty pretty artful. I cool. Thank you. <laughs> but I like yeah, I my I my, I you know I do a lot of documentation and work over the years, and my my sort of fallback is is like the only reason you know about the ancient Egyptians is because they wrote it down. So. <laughs> you know, that's kind of like my motivating principle. Right. <laughs> right. So well, we are coming up on our hard cap because yeah. you've got a, you've got a show to do. I mean, it's just it's it's on my own personal uh, YouTube. You guys want to stay and hang out on YouTube? I'm actually going to be using all of this stuff, and I've got some other like fancy camera angles as well. You want to just see different are you broadcasting you're broadcasting that on your youtube and, and you're sort of like restreaming it to other platforms too is that right i am yeah 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 i am so i'm uh i'm actually doing something probably <laughs> it's, it's a little bit crazy but um i'm using restream to stream to facebook youtube and also to my instagram via a an app called yellow duck ah uh, yeah using yes. obs so, so let me know how that goes because I'm I was curious about Yellow Duck. I looked at it and all the I looked into some of those restream things to to Instagram and I'm like, looks a little dodgy. I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> Yellow Duck for a week. Um, I did I did an IG takeover on Eventide's uh, Instagram and um, it worked well. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, but yeah, I know can some of that stuff can be a little bit dodgy, but yeah. you know. Yeah. But I, what I figured out is that I have to stay right in the middle of the frame if I want it, uh, people to see me on it on Instagram because you can't have the two different frame sizes. So, yeah. Yeah. So All anyway. Right. Well, uh, cool. Yeah. Well, I will try to catch some of that. And uh... yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, thanks. I, I know that you guys, um, there was a couple of comments and stuff that we didn't get a chance to uh, answer, but um, Connor wants the pack for Bitwig. Oh, that's something maybe someone could get on uh, that. The same pack for Bitwig. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. And, uh, Mushroom Jesus uses Lula, which is another option. Um, Lula is fine. He says, I'm not yeah. familiar with Lula. Yeah. Lula is like another restream, except for you can do Instagram through Lula instead of going through yellow, yellow duck. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. It's a restreamer for Instagram. Okay. That's good yeah. to know. Yeah. Right. So much knowledge in these comments. These are going to be rich. Know, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me, Peter. Thanks, Sensel, for having me and creating these awesome packs and your amazing tools. And um, yeah. All right. Well, hey, it was great to see you. Glad to spend some time and uh, glad we got to do a little collab there. And yeah. look forward to your show. Thanks so much. And I'm going to let you go. And I'm going to take, while you go, I'm going to take a quick look at the comments and see if there's anything okay. I need to fill in at the very end here. And then I will say goodnight. Okay. okay Thank thanks so much. Bye. All right. Here I am. You can see me twice. Wow. That's weird. All right. Now I'm going to go take a quick look at the comments and just sort of, oh, wow. That cursor is over here. Like it matters. There we go. All right. In the comments section. Uh, MD, let me know where you can reach out to Laura. Like, oh god, yeah, all of that stuff. Um, Bitwig. All right. Um, <laughs> I need to let the guest talk more. Okay, fair enough. I'll take that consideration. All right. So, I took a quick break there. All right. I like that criticism. I need to let the guest talk. Yes, I am learning my way as a host. So I'm very excited here. So yeah, sometimes I get carried away. Uh, and NZ was also looking for a way to contact Laura. Um, yeah, she's on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. So um, yes, you can find her there. And uh, I'm sure if you have a good question, 
she can respond with a good answer. All right, thanks so much for joining us. I'm sorry I talk too much. Like I said, I'm very excited. Okay, have a good night, and uh, I will see you on the next stream. Thanks for joining us. You get to watch me use a mouse. All right, I get to use the mouse.